This video discusses a potential security vulnerability with the voter's end of the Sequoia AVC Advantage electronic voting machine. It appears possible to easily tamper with the voting results without understanding the microprocessor or software or tampering with either of those on the machine itself. The machine works by having a voter push a button next to their candidate of choice. In return for the button press, a light will light up. I will demonstrate. Now, amazingly, there appear to be no security mechanisms on the voter's end of the voting machine. And in fact, all you need to gain access to the electronics is a Phillips screwdriver and an Allen wrench. After the voter template paper has been removed, there are 12 subpanels. And for our attack, we're going to swap one of the subpanels out with an identical subpanel that we have tampered with. Now, this will allow us to switch the votes for two candidates. In our example, we're going to swap the votes for the candidates assigned to positions G22 and H22. For clarity, we've labeled the rows and columns on the voting machine. And again, we are going to swap out the buttons assigned to candidates at position G22 and H22. Now, I'm going to replace the good subpanel with our tampered and modified one. For the purposes of clarity, we've labeled buttons G22 and H22. Initially, the cheating mode is off. So, when I press the button for G22, the light lights up for position G22. Also, on the LCD display, you see G22 is displayed. That's the same information that the microprocessor gets. So the microprocessor would recognize the G22 is pressed. In a similar manner, when I press H22, you see the light is lit up for that position, and H22 shows up on the LCD display, showing that that's what the microprocessor sees as well. Now we're going to turn on cheating mode remotely so that we can begin swapping candidate votes for G22 and H22. We're going to be enabling the cheating mode with this remote control circuit. Now ordinarily, we would turn cheating mode on during the election time from hundreds of feet away or perhaps through a wall as we've demonstrated in the laboratory setting. But for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to enable cheating mode nearby. We are now in cheating mode. When the voter selects G22, the microprocessor is fraudulently led to believe that H22 has been pressed. Yet the voter sees the correct light associated with G22 light up and therefore is not suspicious. However, on the LCD, you see that H22 is registered with the microprocessor. So the microprocessor believes H22 was actually pressed when it was not. Similarly, if we press the button for H22, the correct light lights up. However, the microprocessor registers G22 and will log a vote for that candidate. Now there are four main ways for a vote tamperer to swap out a modified subpanel. 
The first is during the election, a dishonest voter behind a voting curtain can swap out these panels. However, this isn't the most practical form of attack because there has to be at least one dishonest voter per tampered voting machine. These subpanels can also be swapped out when the, the voting machine is in storage at the warehouse, while it's in transit to the polling place, or while it's in storage at the polling place prior to the election. Note that the subpanels are interchangeable. If, for example, we were to put our tampered subpanel one position higher, then G15 and H15 would be swapped out instead of G22 and H22. Also note, there's nothing special about G22 and H22. The assumption we had was that the candidates for a given position were listed horizontally. Instead, they could have been listed vertically, and we could have done the same attack. All we would have to do is slightly modify our existing wiring on the tampered subpanel. Slight changes to the tampered subpanel would allow the swapping of votes between multiple candidates, not just the two that we've demonstrated here. Vote swapping is not the only possible vote tampering attack, but it is one of the safest. If, for example, votes for a given candidate were canceled altogether, a candidate with zero votes would show up as rather suspicious to the voting authorities. We're also working on a way to fully reprogram all of the subpanels remotely, but we're only about two-thirds of the way there at this time. To hide evidence of vote tampering, cheating mode might be turned off after the election. Also, to completely get rid of all evidence of tampering, the tampered subpanel could be removed after the election as well. Note that there is no evidence of tampering either on the front or the back of the subpanel. If election officials pull apart every one of the subpanels, they would find our tampering electronics. Shown here. Though, we could easily hide it so thoroughly on the printed circuit board that election official would need to be an expert on the design of the subpanel to spot the alien electronics. There are ways other than our remote control device to automatically turn off the cheating mode when the voting machine testing is underway. For example, we can have a microprocessor inside the subpanel look for rapid button pushing, which is indicative of a voting test. We could use its internal clock to turn on cheating only during voting hours or we can have an accelerometer detect when the voting machine might be being wheeled aside for special vote testing. The subpanels are all dumb. By dumb, I mean they only have digital electronics and no microprocessor. The microprocessor is located on the other end of the voting machine. Spare subpanels can be obtained for a few dollars on eBay. But when a subpanel is removed from one voting machine to be replaced by a tampered subpanel, then that original subpanel can be modified for use on a second voting machine. This, in turn, can provide a subpanel for tampering with a third voting machine and so on. In theory, vote tamperers would only need to have one subpanel to start with. Vote tamperers would not necessarily need to attack all or even a lot of voting machines. Instead, they would intelligently choose the canons and precincts to get the most leverage and minimize the number of voting machines they have to go after. Close, typically controversial elections could be swung with just a handful of voting machine attacks. So it appears on the newest version of this voting machine, there is no lock on the voter side of the equipment. Unlike the old one, which we have here, there is a lock. And it also appears that it's very easy and quick to pick open. as such.